welcome to a brand new series from us guys at Tracker, Pay to Play. And if this is what they look like, I cannot wait to try and get into some of the bigger ones. In this series, we're gonna cover all sorts of venues where you have to pay to fish. So we're gonna look at day ticket venues, exclusive venues, but also holiday venues over in Europe. To start off with, we're at a great fishery. It's one of my favorites. It's called the Boathouse Fishery, and it's based in Shropshire, not too far away from Ludlow. This is a lovely little exclusive booking. There's a double swim, then you've got a couple of swims down the far end, and then another couple of swims on the other side. It's ideal for five to six anglers. It's got some cracking fish in here, and there's one especially that I would love to see on the bank, and that is a 40 pound zip linear. And when I say this fish is stunning, it is absolutely incredible. So to start off with, this series is gonna cover myself, fishing at all these sort of venues, and I'm gonna be joined by Mr. John Fluin. John's also gonna be getting his rods out. He's gonna be manning the cameras. I'm gonna be helping him. We're gonna try and find you ways of catching more fish at these venues. So let's head into the venue and check out the Boathouse Fishery. So let's talk lake specifics, shall we? So there's six swims on the lake, not five as stated. There's actually two on the left hand side, a double on the right hand side, and then down this bottom end is three. The lake varies in depth. You've got the slightly deeper end, which we're stood at now. So this is, if I remember rightly, about 10, 11 foot down here. It shallows off going over towards the double up the far end of the lake where the car park is. It's slightly shallower there, but these fish do tend to be caught all over the lake at all times of the year. They don't tend to hold up in the shallower water. Like today, we have seen fish showing and where they're showing is actually where it comes from the deeper water up onto the shallows. We've had some nice southwesterlies last week. It is cooling down today. I think, what are we tonight, John, minus one? Yeah, so we're back into the minuses. Not too worried, we've had some warm wind, so hopefully the fish have got moving and we're gonna be able to get some bites. But for now, we're gonna have a little wander further around the lake, down through this wooded area, so we can check out the whole lake before we decide where we're gonna fish. So we've chosen the double and I'm now going to run through why we've chosen the double. So the Boathouse Fisheries is a lovely shaped lake. It's sort of shaped almost like a triangle. Where you come in at the gate is obviously the narrow point and then it goes off to a big flat bank on the other side. Now out from the double it stays quite shallow, four or five foot, and then it drops off into the slightly deeper water. Now we've seen a couple of fish show in front of a swim called the U. Now where they were showing, I know from previous experience here, that that's just as the water comes up into the shallower area. So what I'm thinking is the fish are more than likely coming from that deeper area up into the shallows and then back into the deeper area. So I don't want to fish the U and fish over the top of them, I want to fish from the double so as they come up over the top they will find my bait there. Now I have caught from this swim previously in the winters. Um, simple chod rigs work well on here but hopefully this time I'm going to find myself a nice clear area, get a little bit of bait on and then see if we can build a few runs. John's obviously going to get his rods out as well. We're going to choose sides when we get in here. I think I'm going to go on the right, he's going to go on the left. On the left he's got something very similar. It's shallow, it's quite shallow out but then it drops off again into deeper water. I know in front of John as he goes further it actually gets much deeper to almost the deepest part of the lake. It's a little bit silty out there. So John again is going to use his experience to get out there, find some nice spots, get a little bit of bait out. But I think the plan is to spread six rods and just aim for a bite. You know, we're still in January at the minute. We have had an uncommonly warm week. You know, last week, a lot of southerly, southwesterly winds. It was pretty warm. We were up into double figures, up to like 12, 13 degrees. You know, and the fish started having a little bit of a feed. But sadly, over the day or two that we've started filming, which is pretty standard for us, is it's dropped down again. The pressure's changed and we're going down into the minuses again tonight but I'm kind of hoping that the fish still stay on the feed and hopefully you can string a few together. One thing is for sure, we're gonna fish hard and we're gonna try and catch some fish out of the boathouse. We wanna fish nice and comfortable as well. It's so important at this time of year. You know, you've got to look, it's cold, it's damp. It is uncomfortable to be out, but if you've got the right gear on, you can make it comfortable. And if you're comfortable, you're gonna fish more effectively. But for now, we're gonna to have to get all the kit out, get set up. We've burnt a lot of hours of daylight, wandering around the lake and getting here. We've only got a few hours until it gets dark. So let's head back to the van, get some kit, get set up, get warm and see if we can get some rods out.
Well, I don't know if you can hear, but just behind the camera, Bonesy's trying to find his last spot. First of all, a hello from me. As Chris said earlier, uh, we're going to get out and about on these ventures on these pay-to-play lakes. This is the first time for me on Boathouse actually fishing. We filmed here just before Christmas, a uh, completely unrelated thing. Didn't I get the rods out, but what an awesome, awesome fishery. But what I wasn't quite expecting was just how weedy it still is. I say we're coming to the end of January and there are still big banks of weed, heavy banks of weed. And it's that sort of silky, snotty weed, which means that if you get your marker rod caught in it, first of all, you can't get it back until you bring it all the way back in and then put it back out. But I have managed to find one small little area, and I'm talking very small, sort of half bivy size, that is clean gravel to the bottom. Uh, just put a little wafter on that and a few spoms of bait. Or oh, wafter. And, or oh, wafter, depends <laughs> north, or, north or south divide on that one. And then what can only be described as a Tesco carrier bag sized PVA bag, super long. Uh, Bonesy said basically as it drops off from the shallow into that deeper water, it gets very much clearer. So about 26 wraps, led it up, found a clear spot right at the back of it. And I basically walked a rod as long as I could with a sort of six ounce PVA bag to flatten any little bits of drifty weed that might be left over the spots. And that's me for now. And so it's one of those venues where the fish are spectacular. The fishing is great fun and to spend a couple of days with Bonesy is always a giggle. So we will sort of give you insights into the rigs and the tactics and the bits and pieces we're doing because that's the whole point of this series is to try and educate on how we approach these venues, different ones every single time. But for now, that's me. Big boilies sound like they're clattering into a bucket behind me. So he's got some big old, big old European 20 millers or something. So that's that for me and on with the rest of the show. So that was a pretty uneventful night, unfortunately. So we arrived at the venue yesterday, as you guys seen, and it is a fantastic venue. And once we got to the swim, you know, time was starting to press on and we'd only got a little bit of time left before darkness came and we needed to get the leads out and try and find some clear spots. This lake is very shallow in front of us, like two, three foot and then drops away. And that's where it tends to be a little bit clearer. So we've had a good lead, lead around and we found a couple of spots and managed to get some areas to sorted. For the ones that we didn't get sorted, we sort of knew areas that were clearer, so we put bags on them. But unfortunately, none of these tactics have worked. So we've got up this morning, we spent a load of time, we found six spots because we want to spread our bets thing is with small lake fishing and what I've picked up when you're fishing little lakes like this is they often don't fish well when you fish on your own because the fish just move away from the pressure. So what we've managed to do by fishing this big double here, we command the whole lake. So we're able to fish pretty much wherever we want. And what we've done is we've spread our rods out now. We've found six really nice spots, little bits of bait on each, really nice clean rigs. And hopefully that is going to be the tactic that works. But again, only time will tell. It's nice to be out anyway, you know, it, it is winter fishing. It's not, you're not expecting to catch a million fish, but I think the tactics we've got and the spots we've got, if the fish are going to have a feed, then we're going to get one in the net. But for now, time for a brew, time to warm up a bit, because one thing's for sure, my toes are not looking for. <laughs> Finally, our first bite of the boathouse. We've um, redone the rods after a not very successful evening. We've got up this morning, scratched the heads a little bit. We knew we needed to find some more spots. We spent a little bit of time with the markers, just showing how important it is at this time of year, making sure you find the right spot. A little bit of bait on each spot. We spread them out nicely, and my right hand rod has rattled off. And finally, we're into our first carp at the boathouse. We've actually had a little bit of a wind change and it has started blowing southwesterly and you can feel it. It's amazing the difference from the northeasterly we had yesterday, how bitter and cold it was, to moving into a southwesterly that's now blowing 
down the deep end of the lake and this bite has actually come off the back of it. So that's quite interesting and I have to keep the rod tip up high because in front of me it is very, very shallow. There's still quite a lot of weed about in this lake. So I'm keeping the tip high, trying to keep the fish up in the water. Hopefully it should have dropped the lead and this fish is going to come straight at us. Just to find a little bit of weed there, but coming back at me. Come on the boathouse. There's one fish in here that I would truly, truly love to see on the bank and not necessarily just for me. I'd just like to see it. It's this linear that's in here. It is absolutely stunning. I've never seen a fish so dark. This lovely little shallow lake with clear water just brings the colours of these fish out every single time. And they're just so nice. I mean, John's done a great job with the fishery. Handpicking all the fish that went into this lake, thinning them out, ensuring that they're good size and great for them to catch. And I'm just hoping this is one of the real pretty ones. It's a common. <laughs> Super scaly common, look. There we go, we said they were scaly in here. <laughs> First boat out fish, come on. First fish from the boathouse. It's also my first fish of the year. It's the first fishing trip of the year for me as well. Just been so busy with Den Bosch and all the other shows going on in January. Plus we've had obviously the release of the Tempest RS that I haven't managed to get out. So this one was taken on a little 12 mil pink peril pop up top of the few maggots. I've got that on a semi stiff link. I'm gonna show you the rig in a minute and just talk you through it. This was put into the corner where you pretty much can't fish from any other swim from here than this one. So I've cast it quite long over to the edge, past where all the weed is, and sure enough, hour or so later, she's ripped off. 23 pound, two ounce, boathouse common. See so here she goes, let's get her back. And let's hope there's a few more to come. But for now, very happy to be off to a start. So it's always nice to have a fish while winter fishing. I think the water temperature is probably around four or five degrees. So we are on the increase in the winter. I think when I've been scuba diving, it gets down to about three, I think it does before it freezes. Anyway, here's the rig. Simple Ronnie rig, probably one of my favorite rigs, especially for fishing a pop-up. They're just so easy to tie, reset themselves, really, really good. I have downsized from a usual size four to a, I've got a size six curve shank there. Just like to scale down a little bit in the winter, you know, I'm using a bit smaller baits. 12 mil pink pearl pop up top with some maggots, makes it nice and light. It's gonna sit on top of whatever chod's out there because this lake, although I've found a nice smooth clean area, there's a good chance there's a little bit of silt weed knocking about. It's the hardest thing to locate without using a gripper lead. So I just wanna make sure if there is anything like that out there, I can feel the lead down, then this will just sit nicely on top of it. But that was my rig. That's what did me a fish and hopefully the same rig is gonna do me another. Right, it's coming towards second night now. It's very much in the second night, yeah. it feels. It's, uh, what do you reckon, the boathouse? Nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. As I say, we filmed you just before Christmas, and it's lovely to be- We didn't fish, though, did we? We no, came we didn't. to film some of the videos that you've seen, obviously, for the Tempest RS range, and it's nice to come back and actually have a little fish, isn't yeah. it? Although we've, we started a bit late yesterday, so it's been a, I suppose by the time we finished tomorrow, we'll have done 36, haven't we? Yeah, but that's, that's all we needed for you to get a bite, my friend. Yes, and I'm pretty, I, I mean, you've got to be quite confident. We've seen. You know, the, the wind's changed. Southwesterly, blowing into the corner. 
I have cut off the back of it, which yeah. you wouldn't normally expect, but then small lakes can be a little bit different. Um, you've got a rod down in where the wind's blowing, so yeah, you've got to be quite confident, haven't Yeah, you? and the thing is, is this time yesterday, it was like zero degrees, oh, yeah, it was it's cold, very much it? warmer, it's like five, yeah. six degrees still, so there is you always... You feel confidence. that southwesterly making a big difference, yeah. which is why it makes such a big difference, you know, with the fishing, because when, when we arrived and you got a northeasterly, you literally feel it's horrible on your face and stuff, and now the wind's blowing, and that southwesterly is so much warmer, which is why the fish follow it, because the southwesterly wind will warm the water slightly down that end. So hopefully, one for you later, won't it? Well, fingers crossed, mate, we can't do much more. The rods are back out. Yeah. And as we head into the evening, I believe Mr. Bones is on pizza duty. Yeah, we got the cop. We're going to get the cob out, get a pizza on, aren't we? Yeah. See how we get on with that. We haven't done it before, so <laughs> it makes a difference. Could end up being non bread. <laughs> it could end up being a pot noodle, to be fair. But we'll find out. We've got a bit of rain coming. Um, but yeah, one fish so far, hoping for more. But yeah, Boathouse Fisheries, lovely little place. How bizarre is that? Just jumped out my bivvy, just to check each alarm, as you do before you get in bed. And I've checked them all, sat back on the bed, had a couple of beats, which I assumed was, because obviously, I just touched the line of each one. And then the right hander, the one that went, did the first fish, has gone again. Just showing them fish seem to be up that in that corner end, which is on the back of a southwesterly, which is just, you know, sometimes it fly, fries your head a little bit, and it's ever so shallow up there as well. You know, down the other end where John's fishing, there's much deeper water, and you know, the water can only be four or five degrees. But if they like it and they feel comfortable there, they're going to be there, aren't they? This one managed to find a weed, but it's come out of it now. Just bringing it over, I can just sort of. I think I could see it then, it's hard with the camera light shining in my eyes, but <laughs> it's just a, uh, that was a hint, John. Get used to it. Uh, let's just get this, uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, she looks quite long. Try a little bit of weed with it. I'll have to go careful. Let's get the net. Some absolutely wicked fish in here. It's got a big old ball of weed with it. I'll try and get that over. Look at that, John. Oh, she's skinny. Come on. Turn over. Just see if we can get you in. There we go. Avoid that ball of weed. Very gently. Ha <laughs> ha! Fish number two. Come on. Little scaly mirror. Oh. Oh, she looks about the same as the last one. Just see if I can get that. I'll be careful because that weed there. Get on a bit and get it in the net. Oh, that proper had hold of that. Let's drop that in there. Fish number two, definitely not the biggest fish for this lake. 19 pound eight, but an absolute perler. You can see that John handpicked all the fish that go in here. And if this is what they look like, I cannot wait to try and get into some of the bigger ones. I know there's a linear in here that will be 40 pound and I've seen a picture of it and it is incredible. But it's proper nice to get another bite. It is January, it's cold, it started raining. So we're gonna get this one back, get the rod back out and see if there's a couple more to come. Well, good morning. Unfortunately, last night was a little bit quiet for myself and John. Once I'd had that mirror, um, we were pretty confident of a bite and I really did think John's rods might have gone off in that deeper water, but they haven't. Um, it's a completely different day again today. It was very cold again this morning because of a clear sky, 
but the sun is out now and it is the perfect sort of weather to be throwing a zig out but unfortunately they're banned on this venue as is particle while we're talking about bait i'm going to talk you through the bait that i've used and how i've caught and my thoughts behind why i do that and why i've used it in this way so the boathouse fishery sees quite a lot of boilie um, through the winter months john still keeps some trickling in even when the anglers aren't here or it's quiet you know they have a winter ticket on it and when the guys aren't here in the week John will still keep some boilie going in so these fish are very used to seeing boilie so what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring a boilie that was going to break down nice and quick so what I do is I've got some SLK here I've broken some of it up just into a bucket and then poured boiling water over it and what the boiling water will do is it'll just break down the boilie really nicely now I've made this mix up especially and the boilies are a lot softer than what they normally would be and it's starting to turn into a really nice mulch that will get down on the bottom but it's really quickly digested by the fish and at this time of the year the fish are really looking for something that doesn't take too much energy to digest it to that then I'm adding a good old handful of magwars John does allow maggots on the venue so I put a couple of handfuls of maggots into my mix the reason I do is there's no fish in the world that doesn't like a maggot. There's not a great deal in them. Again, it doesn't take a lot for the carp to digest, but more than anything, it's a little bit of a, because of the movement, it attracts the carp down to investigate. So a couple of handfuls of maggots in there, mix it up, leave it for a little bit, and that is what I've been spotting out. It's absolutely superb. It works on this venue really, really well, and it's worked for me again. So there we go, lovely little session here at Boathouse Fisheries for myself and John. We will be back again at some point, I'm pretty sure of that. But for now, on Pay to Play, we're going to be going on to our next venue. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing, don't forget to drop something in the comments below. Or if you'd like us to go to a specific venue, pop that in the comments as well. But for me and John now, peace out. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.